In 1920, the conditions in post-war Russia made life very difficult for the Mennonites living there. Instead of the peaceful village, there was famine, murder, rape, and pillage, while their relatives living in America sent what they hoped would be the right things to the right people, they had no recent information. Letters were months old, postal services very unreliable, and conditions were changing constantly. Previously, I told the story about how the Russian Mennonites sent a four-member study commission, of which my father, A. A. Friesen, was chair to find aid for the starving and a new home to emigrate. While in America, my father brought facts and figures on their needs. Who, what, where, how, and when. When, right now, as people were starving. Who should be sent? Competent people who could be trusted as there was so much hostility and dishonesty in what had been prosperous, peaceful country. What should be sent? Food first, then the means of producing the food. How should this be done? With my father's recent accurate information as a guide, Mennonite leaders in the United States organized the Mennonite Central Committee, MCC, in July 1920. MCC's primary objective was to give aid to the Mennonites suffering hunger and dire need during the famine in post-revolutionary Russia. Well organized and well motivated, MCC sent staff, volunteers and resources to those who so desperately needed them. My grandmother, aunt and uncle owed their lives to the food offered by MCC. Since then, it has developed into a worldwide relief agency of Anabaptist churches that shares God, love and compassion in the name of Christ through relief, development, and peace for all people everywhere. This has remained their policy for almost a hundred years. Get the right information, send the right people, and get the job done. All this according to Anabaptist principles of faith in God and love for fellow man. What and how this is done has changed over the years. What has not changed is the mandate to get the right aid to the right people at the right time in the most effective way. One survey of nonprofit agencies that compared ratio of administrative costs to the cost of materials actually delivered rated MCC as second from the top, meaning that donations largely go to where they are designated and not to administration. MCC's programs worldwide depend on the needs presented at that time. The question is asked, what is needed? Is MCC the best agency to meet that need or should some other agency take on the project? Here are a few examples. My sister and her husband were sent to Mennonites in Mexico to assist in two areas. First, improving their agricultural practices and second, advancing education. Now, a friend of mine was sent to Jordan where he was involved in helping people produce fruit juice more effectively. Other friends have been involved in restoration following disasters such as flood and earthquakes. MCC successfully gets the help needed to its destination by working together with local people who know what it is needed and how to get it there. As an Anabaptist organization, MCC strives to make peace a part of everything they do. When responding to disasters, they work with local groups to distribute resources in ways that minimize conflict. In their development work, they plan with community and church groups to make sure the projects meet their needs. They also advocate for policies that will lead to a more peaceful world.